learn how to be self-disciplined in this truth. All right, Shola Wong. First and foremost, giving all praises, honor, glory, respect, and blessings to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Salutations to the Lord's elect on the four corners of the earth, pushing this truth in sincerity while patiently waiting for Yahweh Shai's return. And as always, I would like to give double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, which have taught us everything we know through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. And welcome to another impromptu being brought to you by the spirit and brought through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. This is the brother Yashamai coming back at you with another video. Okay. You know, and as you may know, um, discipline is a must when it comes to being in this truth. Now, when you look up the word discipline, the word discipline means to learn how to obey a law or a rule through the act of self-punishment or self-affliction when, when you, well, yeah, pretty much, you know, the, you know, discipline is when you learn to obey laws or rules through self-punishment because when you punish yourself for disobeying a law or rule it makes you not want to do it again it makes you want to comply even more so I'll give an example of discipline when you were a child when your parents told you to wash the dishes and you did not do it a form of discipline that your parents will put upon you for, for breaking the rule of washing the dishes when you were supposed to would be they would either tell you to go to your room or they would take your video game system away or you would not be allowed to go outside to hang out with your friends okay and there, there, there are many different forms of punishment that you can do in order to administer discipline there's mental punishment such as taking someone's privileges away from them and then there's physical punishment where you inflict pain through a belt a switch um, a paddle a, um, a, a shoe a switch you know so it is through those type of punishments that when discipline is administered you grow up start starting to learn how to obey the rules or the laws of society you steal a candy bar or, or you, you steal something what happens you get arrested and you get locked up you're not allowed to walk around outside you know you can't you can't flirt with women you gotta stare at a great wall all day you're wearing an orange jumpsuit you're probably living with some other people who are who are maniacs you know there's many forms of punishment that can be used to administer discipline now while there is a such thing as discipline there is a such thing as self-discipline and self-discipline is when you would allow yourself to do particular things or you would not allow yourself to do particular things based on the laws, statutes, and commandments that are written in the Holy Scriptures. And and if you um not going to say that, you know, if you go off on purpose, right? But let's just to say if you had a particular goal in mind and you failed to reach it, what could you what kind of punishment could you inflict upon yourself to ensure that the next time you set a goal you'd make sure to do it you see this is what self-discipline is you know discipline in itself 
in order to learn proper discipline you must learn to enforce particular punishments for not you know seceding or not doing what you said you was going to do now of course man's goings are of the Lord but through self-discipline you can learn to be a better brother in his truth you can learn to be better to brothers in this truth through self-discipline and through the mastering of self-discipline you know through the mastering of self-discipline you can achieve even greater versions of yourself when it comes to serving Yahweh while Yahweh shy and being a better brother in this truth than you've ever did when you first came in as truth so this lesson is going to be about self-discipline in which in order to learn proper discipline there must be a punishment for something that you did or something that you did not do that goes contrary to the holy scriptures Now, I'm not saying, you know, you should inf inflict physical pain on yourself, but no, you know, maybe you should tell yourself, you know, well, I'm not going to do this favorite hobby. You know, every brother has a, a you know, some kind of thing they like to do in this truth whenever, you know, they're not, whenever, you know, they need a break from studying or whatnot. There's always a way you can punish yourself in order to administer discipline you know me I like video games you know so if I did not do something I was supposed to well I could just be like well I just won't play I just won't play video games you know because my flesh likes it but my my spirit is into the truth you see and, and punishing the flesh is, is the best form of learning discipline because the flesh loves worldly things but um moving on it says by constant self-discipline and self-control you can develop greatness of character keep that in mind Self-discipline is a powerful attribute to have, yet challenging to obtain. So, you know, it's, it's not something that you can learn overnight. Okay, self-discipline takes constant practice. Constant practice. You have to constantly be at it. Just like somebody that is, um, you know, just like a blacksmith that is you know smithing a weapon he has to constantly hammer and hammer and hammer and hammer away at that blade until it's made into the perf perfect weapon that he wants it to be well that's what self-discipline is like in his truth you gotta constantly be hammering at yourself constantly 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 chipping away at things that you don't need in this truth while keeping the things that you need in this truth constantly chipping away at things that the brotherhood don't need while constantly observing the things that could be beneficial to the brotherhood that you can keep but you must constantly be constantly chipping away at yourself you know, if you find yourself doing some kind of bad habit that's offensive to Yahweh or Yahweh Shai, especially according to the scriptures, or that is offensive to the brotherhood, you gotta chip away at that. And you gotta you gotta learn to punish yourself whenever whenever 
you 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 try to get into that bad habit again. You'll be like, you know what? Fine. Well, I'm just not gonna go to the movies. You know, I'm not gonna play basketball. You know. But you you gotta always punish yourself when 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 you don't reach a particular goal or milestone. You know. I mean. If you say that you're going to do, you know, two videos in a day, right? But you only did one, but you failed to do the other. Well, guess what? You got to apply discipline through through the means of punishment. You got to punish yourself. You got to be like, ah, you know what? Since I didn't do that video, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to do this today. You know, I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to play football you know I'm not gonna pop my I'm not gonna pop my woman I'm gonna study you know I'm gonna get get more into the scriptures you see so it says self-discipline is the ability to do whatever it takes to overcome obstacles and there's always going to be obstacles in this truth because the world is self is sinful so when you're walking in the spirit of Yahweh Shai you're separating yourself from the world but as you're doing so know that many obstacles is going to come your way a pretty woman with a big butt with long hair might be flirting with you at your job and she might have a man well you got to chip away at that you got to be like hey look I can't deal with you like that. You got a man. You see? You know, uh, um, you might have to stop at a gas station to get gas, risking being late for work. Well, guess what? If you don't stop to get gas, then you're probably going to run out of gas on your way home. So you got to be like, you know what? Let me call my job. Let them know I'm going to be slightly late because I got to get gas in my car. Blase, blase. You see, even at your job, you might be working at a fast food restaurant. A customer might come up with a bad attitude. I ordered fries. I ordered a large thing of fries in the end. I mean, you know, you know, the person that ordered the small fries, but but they're complaining that they they're, they're claiming that they ordered the large fries and some drinks, and, and pretty much you're being embarrassed. Well, guess what? You gotta you gotta just. Learn to deal with it, man. Okay? So there's going to be all kind of obstacles in this truth. Because, this, well, like the scriptures say, he that separated from the world and, and coming come into the truth and walk in the spirit of Yahweh Shai, making for himself a prey. A prey to who? A prey to demons. So self-discipline is the ability to do whatever it takes to overcome obstacles and reach your goals. So you know, you might have a goal to do laundry, you know. But then you might you might wake up and, and you might be feeling tired. You know the day is going to be over soon, and you know that you have to do laundry before that day is over. So 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 the obstacle here is you being you know you're tired, you know. You feel like, you know, life is just weighing you down and you just don't want to do it. Well, that's an obstacle. That's the obstacle that you have to overcome in order to get your lazy butt up to go do your laundry before the day is over. Because guess what? If you don't do your laundry, well, you got to discipline yourself through the means of punishment. You see? And this is how you learn um, discipline, proper discipline, by punishing yourself when you fail to do things. Or, or you might have done something wrong. You know? So it says, even when it is inconvenient or uncomfortable. And that's why you should learn to be uncomfortable in this society. Because the comfort that this society provides is nothing but wickedness. People run to cigarettes. 
They run to weed and drugs for comfort. You know, if a man won't comfort, he'll go and smash his neighbor's wife just to relieve himself after he's been premeditating on it for, for almost a week. You know, you might have had a long day at work and, and you might see that the club is open. Well, you can't go to no club. Clubs are full of adultery and violence. <laughs> okay, full of jungle music and psycho babble, drugs, Okay, all kind of trafficking goes on there, gangs being there. So the comfort of this society is, is wicked. So you, you have to learn how to be uncomfortable in this society. And this is where being separate from the world comes in. Because when you're separate from the world, the, the flesh is uncomfortable. Because the flesh wants to do the things of the world. So through faith and fear in Yahweh, Bahashum, Yahweh Shai, you walk in the spirit of Yahweh Shai by observing the, the law, statutes, and commandments of the Holy Scriptures and keeping them to the best of your ability. This is how you be separate from the world. And this is also another form of how you discipline yourself. Because you know that if you do the things of the world, you know that the Lord can punish you for for acting upon the 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 the, the um the wickedness of the world and, and, and indulging in those things you know the lord can punish you so through fear and faith you 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 do not the deeds of the world to the best of your ability okay you're staying away from porn you're staying away from orgies and you know you're staying away from drugs you're not eating edibles you're not being proud you're paying your tights okay so it says it may involve saying no to things that you want or saying yes to things that you hate now is that scriptural yes it is let's come over here to the book of Romans the seventh chapter because even Paul spoke about you know this matter the things that he would not do that he do but the things that he would do that he would not so right here what do we see we 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 see um the conflict of two natures so it says for we um romans 7 verse 14 for we know that the law is spiritual but i am carnal sold under sin for that which i do i allow not Okay, for what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. Okay, and if 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 you if you are a brother who is spiritual, who have faith in Yahweh Wa Yahweh Shai, you're gonna hate the wickedness of the world. You're not gonna want to be around wickedness. You're not going to indulge in it. If you see pork on the market, you're going to hate it. You're not going to want to be around it. You're not going to buy it. You're not going to consider buying it. You see? You know, you might see you might see food that might have pork mingled in it. Guess what? You're not going to indulge in it. You're going to hate it. It says, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. See? For I know that in me, that in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Now when it says the flesh, this is talking about your mind. How do we know this? Because the scriptures tell you that the heart, which goes back to the Hebrew word love, which means your mind, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Okay? Your carnal mind is desperately looking for wickedness to indulge in. But your spirit is like, nah, 
nah, bruh, we ain't doing that. Nope. Okay, you know that woman, you know that woman's got a man, but 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 she's trying to hit on you. Your spirit is like, oh fuck yeah, I'll smash that. But your spirit is like, nah, man, nah, you can't do that. Because if I do, that's a sin unto death, and the Lord can punish me for that. You know, nah, I gotta flee from this woman. And, and that's what your spirit is saying. But your flesh is saying otherwise. You see. So it says, in my flesh, in my mind, dwelleth no good thing. Okay, Proverbs 20, 20, uh, Proverbs 28, verse 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Meaning, how to perform good in his mind he find not. Okay? Because when when we was all in the world, right? We was all indulging in wickedness, you know? Because, you know, we our, our, our minds convinced us that smoking weed was okay. It's a good way to escape reality and and get away from the hell that the world is putting upon you. We thought that it was okay to smash on another man's woman, you know? We thought that it was okay to um to um to to uh, chase the bag, to make it in this society, to go to college, which college only teaches you how to be a third degree witch. A mason. So we thought it was okay to go to college. And several, several, several of us have, have been to college before. I've been to college before, okay? And, and college, college is nothing but witchcraft. It's full of women, you know, it's full of lust. Because, you know, you know, the, another reason why a lot of guys go to college is because there's a lot of women there. And, and women are into guys who are, who are, who are in college. A lot of guys who met their first love, it was really when, when they went to college. So college is nothing but a snare, but guess what? When, when, when we was in the world, you know, we, we thought, mind your heart, right? We thought that it was okay to go to college, you know? We thought it was okay to become a rap star. To, 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 to blow up in this society not knowing all the miserable things we will have to do in order to make it you know we thought it was okay to eat pork and shrimp and lobster and crab you know we thought it was okay to to um to to lie to our parents we thought it was okay for the woman to rule the household. There was a lot of things we thought it was okay. We thought it was okay to get tattoos and edge ups and shave off our facial hair because our minds convinced us that those things are okay. So we know that in our minds dwelleth no good thing. And how to do good in our minds, we find nothing that is good. But when we go to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Holy Scriptures, we consent that the law is good, right? So without the law, statutes, and commandments of the Holy Scriptures, what is this world? This is a world full of sin, iniquity, and wickedness. Because the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Just look at Esau Edom. He does not live after the law, statutes, and commandments of the Holy Scriptures. He lives after his own heart. And look where, where the world is today. Because how to perform that is good is not present in the heart. It is present in, in the Holy Scriptures. Which Yahweh Shai is the Holy Scriptures. And Yahweh Shai is the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Holy Scriptures. Yahweh Shai is also the son of the Mosai, Yahweh. 
for the good that I would I would I do not for the for the good that I wish I could do I do not but the evil which I wish I could not do that I do now if I do that I would not now if I do that I would not it is no more I that do it but sin that dwelleth in me okay and that 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 sin dwells within our mind because the scriptures tell you what the creature, the creature was subject to vanity now when we look up the word vanity the word vanity means evil so so our minds were subject to evil you see this is why self discipline is very important in this truth because it can further help you to separate from the wicked ways of this society because this society has nothing good to offer I find then a law that when I would do good evil is present and how do you do good through the law statutes and commandments now we're not going to be saved on keeping the law statutes and commandments but we keep the laws, statutes, and commandments to the best of our ability to be separate from the world and, and to be closer to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, through faith and fear. For I delight in the law of Yahweh after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members okay O oh, wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from the body of this death right because the scriptures tell you right um she that liveth in pleasure while she liveth is dead right now when it says she that liveth in pleasure you can apply that to the whole nation of Israel because when you go to the book of what is it Jeremiah Israel is likened unto a calmly and delicate woman. I believe that's Jeremiah the second chapter. Israel is likened unto a calmly and delicate woman. So if we, being Israelites, as a nation of people, live in sin, then we are dead while we live. Okay? Okay, she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Why? Because the pleasures of this world is based on wickedness. And if you're delving into the pleasures of this world, then you're delving in sin. Which which what? Leaves you in a congregation of the dead. For the wages of sin is death. Right? You're spiritually dead. When you live in pleasure, when you, when you delve into the pleasures of this society, you're spiritually dead. For the wages of sin is death. And eventually it's going to, that delving into the pleasures of this kingdom is going to lead to your physical death. Okay? It's going to lead to your physical death. You know, you might get caught up in the act of adultery and you might get put to death by, by the man's, uh, uh, by, 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 the, by the woman's husband right there. You know? You might smoke weed that day and, and, and you 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 know you might bug out and, and, and die. You know, there's a couple of people who have overdosed from drugs. You know? You might get a tattoo one day and then you might walk outside and get ran over by a car and die. For the wages of sin is death. I thank Yahweh through Yahweh Shai Hamashiach our Lord. So then, well, let me read this up here again. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank Yahweh through Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, our Lord. So then with me, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of Yahweh. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Now, when Paul said with the mind, he was talking about with his spirit. Because the flesh, the flesh is talking about your actual brain inside your skull. Okay? But your mind, your mind is really talking about your spirit. Okay? 
And this flesh here is talking about your actual brain inside your um inside your skull. Okay. So you see, when you apply self-discipline, it further helps you to separate from the ways of this world. You know, and through faith and fear in Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, you know to separate from the world because the world itself is wicked and full of sin. And by separating yourself from the world, you're walking in the spirit of Yahweh Shai. You're walking after the spirit of Yahweh Shai by walking in the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability. Because how was Yahweh Shai perfect? He was made perfect through what? The keeping of the law, statutes, and commandments. Now, are we going to be made perfect? Of course, but that's only after Yahweh Shai returns. But before Yahweh Shai's return, you know, we're going to be what? We're going to be, we're going to be in the making, in the fighting to be perfect according to the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Holy Scriptures and according to the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Holy Scriptures, which we know Yahweh Shai to be the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Holy Scriptures. So through through the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Holy Scriptures, we learn to be perfect to the best of our ability. Okay, through the through the law, statutes, and, comm and commandments of the Holy Scriptures, we learn to be perfect to the best of our ability. See? And and self-discipline can greatly further you you fighting to be perf to 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 self-discipline can can greatly further you in your journey to be perfect to the best of your ability. So let's come back over here now. It says, but with the power of self-discipline, it becomes easier to stand up for yourself. You know, somebody in the world might, uh, one of your homeboys in the world might offer you to smoke weed with them. You know, you know, so by applying self-discipline, you'd be like, nah, I can't do that. Because you know that if you if you do it, there's going to be a punishment that's going to come from the Lord. And you can also choose to punish yourself. But inevitably, you're going to be punished by the Lord if you do that. Especially when you know better and you know not to do it. You see? So, you know, you, you tell yourself, nope, I'm not going to do it. Because you know that if you do it, you can be punished by the Lord for it. And the Lord can punish you with pain by giving you afflictions, you know. And also, if you're truly into self-discipline, you, you punish yourself for doing it. Which, you know, if you know not to smoke weed, but you do it anyway, you know, you're just simply not right, man. You're simply not right. And, and if you don't repent... Well, the Lord is going, he's going to get rid of you. He's going to cast you out, out of the truth. And then eventually you're going to be destroyed. Okay. Okay, if you know not to smoke weed out of fear and faith toward Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, you should know not to do it. There should not even be a moment when, 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 when you hesitate to say no. You know, the answer should automatically be no. At the snap of a finger. Nope, can't do it. Because you know what the Lord could do to you if you do it. 
So most individuals would love to be more self-disciplined, yet very few people actually take action to do it. Okay, that very few people is the elect. The elect is going to learn some form of self-discipline. Now, some members of the elect may have more self-discipline than others, but um, you got some members of the elect that may have a lot more self-discipline than others. You know, you know, self self-discipline could be applied to your daily life. You know, you can tell yourself like, you know what? If I don't wash these dishes, I'm just I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna watch the football game today. You know, I'm going to just sit down and read and study, you know, because when you apply self-discipline, you know, you, 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 you start to learn how to be strict about, about the things that, that you know that have to be done. And you know to be strict about the things not to do. So perhaps you start your day with good intentions, but veer off as the day progresses due to challenging issues, stresses, or distractions. And there's a lot of distractions in the world. You know, football, video games, basketball, you know, um, wine, hard liquor, um, even movies could be a distraction, okay? Your woman, she could be a distraction. Wanting to do particular things with your family for that day, that could be a distraction. All, all these different um, holiday events they have, that could be a distraction. Which you're not supposed to celebrate these holidays, but I'm just giving some examples. You see, there's a lot of distractions in this world. It says, thankfully, there are some strategies you can incorporate into your daily life so you can become a master of self-discipline and stay on task. Follow these techniques to strengthen your self-discipline. Okay. Be committed to the cause. Are you truly unhappy being undisciplined? Is this something you're committed to improving? Many times people claim they want to be more self-disciplined, but the truth is they honestly don't mind being the way they are. And that's what you call a hypocrite. Okay. A hypocrite does that. They'll pretend like they want to be disciplined, but then eventually they just go back to doing the same things they were doing in their daily life. And the scriptures say, be not a hypocrite in the sight of men. Be honest with yourself. If this is something that you definitely want to improve in your life, it may take a bit of time. And yeah, self-discipline does take a bit of time. You know? You're not going to just learn self-discipline overnight, just like how you're not going to learn this truth overnight, you know? It says it's going to take a bit of time and effort. Notice how he put effort in there. So you got to put forth the effort. It says, but it can be done. The only way you'll succeed is by staying committed to the cause. And that's constantly by, you know, constant self-observance. Okay? Constant self-exervance. And, um, let's do this. Type in Google. Okay. Examine yourself. Excuse me. K, 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 KJV. So this is 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5. It says, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. In other words, test your own selves. You got to test yourself, you know, and one way you can test yourself is by what? Having daily goals that you can set. 
setting goals, you know, if you know there's something that needs to be done, set a goal on it. You know? Like, yo, I told the brother I was going to be at his house today so we could break bread and get into the scriptures and drink some yan yan. You know, my goal is to get there exactly by this time. You know? So, you know? And that, that, that was just an example. You got to test yourself, man. Test yourself. You know, ask yourself particular questions. If I was in this situation, would I do that? Would I do that? How? What scripture could I apply to know that I'm not supposed to do that? You see? You got to constantly test yourself. Okay? Know ye not your own selves, how that Yahweh Shai is in you, except ye be repro reprobates. Okay, so that's the, that's the whole point self-examination and one way you can constantly examine yourself or apply self-examination is by self-discipline okay two write it down you know the process of writing your ideas and goals helps you clarify the thoughts in your mind so you can come up with an action plan that you can stick to. You see? Write down all the areas that you wish to improve. Your finances, your relationships, careers, or anything in between. Even if you wanted to, you know, like, if, if you had a goal in mind to improve your relationship between you and Yahweh, one way you can improve that relationship it's by reading the scriptures, you know. Just you know, go 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 to um like this website right here, one of my most favorite websites. Type in righteous, you know. Type in sin. Know what sin is so you can know to avoid it. If it if it be in your ability to avoid it. Because there are sins that we commit on a daily on a daily basis that we that that we have no power over okay believe it or not but every day we're defiling our temple just by breathing in this air why because the US government is sending out jets to spray chemtrails in the air such as aluminum barium arsenic estrogen uh, uh, um they're spraying uh, mercury they're spraying all kind of harmful chemicals in the air that defile your body daily okay you're not supposed to breathe in smog from vehicles every day we're breathing in polluted air just from vehicles the clothes we wear are with mixed fabrics we're not supposed to wear clothes with mixed fabrics some of us have to work on the Sabbath so if you want to further improve your relationship with Yahweh and Yahweh Shai well, go go to go to the Blue Letter Bible, or go to um this website right here and type in type in righteous, type in or or you can type in sin. Learn what sin is. You know, type in offense so you can know what is offensive according to the scriptures and what is not offensive. You know, type in pride, type in rebuke. You know, type in these different words to, to help and uh, uh, to, to further help you self-discipline yourself in this truth. So it says, include what changes you would like to see and how you believe will be the best way to make it happen. Enlist the help of others, such as brothers, you know, to hey, like tell brothers like, hey, yo. You know, Bubba Kashaw, you know, if, if you see me, um, you know, eating this particular food, can you remind me not to eat it because I might forget, you know? Or, or if you if you see that I'm, I'm drinking, you know, go, going a little overboard with the drinking, Bubba Kashaw, could, could you, can, can, can you rebuke me on that? Can, can you give me the stop, you know? So enlist others to help. Enlist the help of others. It's absolutely wonderful that, that you've committed to make positive a positive change in your life, but don't keep it under wraps. 
Tell others that you want to make a change and boost your self-discipline. Don't be ashamed that you weren't more self-disciplined from the beginning. The important thing is that you're now making po a you're now taking positive action. Those who love you will be there to support you and help you celebrate your your success. Your support group can also help you get through the bad days and put you back on track to achieve your goals. Believe in yourself, which we believe in Yahweh Bahashom Yahweh Shai, because at the end of the day, we don't control our actions. That's why we pray to Yahweh Bahashom Yahweh Shai. You know, if it be His will, you know, give us the ability to do this. Give us the ability to learn that, so we can better improve. Because if it's detrimental or if it's beneficial to the truth, well, what did Yahweh Shai say? He said, "Knock, and it shall be given unto you." Okay, so believe in Yahweh, Bahashom, Yahweh Shai, because they control our actions. Therefore, if there's something we wish to learn, it's always better to pray on it first, better than to just to try to learn it on your own. Have faith in yourself and know that if you can master your self discipline, you can do anything in righteousness, as long as it be righteous and not wicked. That is, there will be both good and bad days and yet yeah, you got to understand that you know the Lord deals with a balance you're gonna have good days and you're also gonna have bad days I've experienced that last month you know I, I had some some good days where I was able to chill you know I was able to buy food and and um you know just just enjoy my day you know listen to videos hop on hop hop on the ps4 but then you know I have bad days where where I'm unable to cash my check for whatever weird reason, and the check I have deposited to my bank, I cannot I cannot withdraw it from my bank because for one the bank is closed and for two because uh, I have no debit card. So guess what? Now I have to wait until either my debit card comes in or I gotta wait until Tuesday. You know, which I'm not thinking that far ahead. You know. Because my mindset is focused on the now, the present. But you know, I mean, you know, I just I just looked up the schedule or whatever, you know, and you know, you know, damn bank don't open until fucking Tuesday. So now I'm I'm practically broke. I ain't got no fucking money. I ain't got shit. But you know what? I'm going through it. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. That but that further proves, you no know, Proverbs 11 verse one. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. So, if you're having if you're having nothing but good days, you have to question if the Lord is really dealing with you. Because in uh, Hebrews the twelfth chapter, it tells you, "Despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth." So, hey, right now. I, I believe I'm being chastised by the Lord. Okay, hey, I'm I'm broke. I'm going through it, but you know what? That's fine, man. That's fine. I I I'll, I'll be broke. You know, at the water you howl, the water you howl shot. But the point is, is that we're gonna have good days and bad days. But as long as you remain focused and committed, you'll be successful in strengthening your self discipline. Remember to focus on the big picture, which ultimately the big picture in our case is salvation and, and being the first fruits to inherit the kingdom of heaven. That, that's the big picture. That's what we're really focused on. We're focused on the kingdom of heaven. You know, that's, that's a part of what drives us to do our videos daily and to fast and pray and to be brotherly and to pay our tithes and to keep the law statutes and commandments to the best of our ability and to and to you know pray and make supplication unto Yahweh and Yahweh Shai and to go out on the highways and hedges rather if it be hot or cold outside you know and to be humble and not proud 
and to study. So remember to focus on the big picture, the kingdom of heaven, and concentrate on how your body, mind, and energy will change for the better when you stay committed. Many people admire those who are self-disciplined, you know, because if you're self-disciplined, well, guess what? You're going to be greatly admired. You know, your, your, your boss is going to greatly admire you because, you know, you're doing your, your best to show up on time, you know. Even if you have to wake up early in the morning, you know, you're always doing your best to stay, to, you're always doing your best to make it on time, you know. And let me tell you something. A person who is self-disciplined and has worked for a company for several years, it's going to be hired for that boss to, 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 to fire that individual because he sees that the individual who shows up to work and, and, and is a self-disciplined, he sees that individual is committed to the business. So that's going to be the last person that, 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 um, that the boss fires. And in, in, in this case, being in the truth, the boss is who? Yahweh Shai. Okay? Yahweh is the ultimate boss, but Yahweh Shai is, is the top boss under Yahweh. Okay? And guess what? If you're committed to this truth, if you're committed to this truth, if you're constantly doing the things which, which the Lord said to do, well, guess what? The Lord is not going to kick you out of the truth because he sees that you're committed. He sees that you fear and have faith in him. You know, he sees that you're, you're doing your videos. He sees that you're going out to the highways and the hedges, you know, to the best of your ability, despite being in his weak flesh. Okay, so, you know that self-discipline, man, is powerful. Many people admire those who are self-disciplined. These people can stay on a schedule and never seem to lose focus on what they need to accomplish. They make more wise decisions. Why? Because they're patient. Which is why, like Apostle Gabar said, you got to learn to suffer. Because the word patience means to suffer. Because even when things ain't going your way, you're not going to act you're, you're, you're not going to act out in a rash way. You know, you're, you're not going to do something offensive that could cause you to be fired from your job. You're not going to do something that is offensive. You know, as a matter of fact, in the, the, the scriptures tell you that he that is soon angry dealeth foolishly. Because a, a, a person who is soon angry is a person who lacks self-discipline. Well, I wouldn't say that because you could be soon angry but still be self-disciplined, you know, because a person who is self-disciplined also has, he also controls his actions. He's not, he's not quick to act out rashly or, or he's not quick to do something offensive when he gets angry, you know. He waits patiently. You see? And in our case, well, when the Lord brings trials and troubles upon us, you know, yeah, we may get angry, but we don't we don't act out rashly. You know, the scriptures say, be ye angry and sin not. So what do we do? We fast and we pray on it. We fast and pray on whatever tribulation we're going through. And then we wait for the Lord to make his move because the Lord moves on his time. He don't move on our time. He moves on his time. So. We're going to type this in. No. You might get angry at your job because one of your customers cuss you out and then you might you might walk around the you might walk around the counter and you know get up in the customer's face and cuss him out. Well, guess what? That could cost you your job. Now you homeless on the street. Your woman don't left you because you ain't got no income coming in. And we all know a woman likes a man with power. So, as, 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 so learning self-discipline can, can keep your emotions in check. It can keep your thoughts in check. It can keep your, your, your actions in check. It can keep your thoughts in check. 
because you know if you do something you could be punished for it especially if you do something out of you know emotion or you might act out rashly you know through self discipline you know you 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 learn to deal wisely if you're a brother in, in this truth and you're walking in the spirit of Yahawashai, if, if you learn self-discipline, you know to deal wisely according to how the scripture said to deal wisely. So this is from the um, blueletterbible.org. Okay. Proverbs 14 and 17. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly. Now when it says soon angry, that's not talking about somebody who gets angry real soon. You know. This is talking about somebody, you know, as soon as they get angry, they start throwing blows. They start throwing fists. Or as soon as they get angry... You know, their first instinct is is to you know call up the person and curse them out and make death threats and all that shit. You see, or or, or your boss might have called you up and said that your wages were being garnished because you was late from work. So then you call him back and you're like, you know what? Fuck you. Now you don't lost your job. You see, so that's what it means by he that is soon angry deal foolishly. You know, your first instinct is to get your instant revenge because you know it'll feel good. So he that is soon angry deal foolishly. Now you can soon be angry, but still apply self-discipline and, and, and keep keep your emotions and your actions and your thoughts in check. It says, and a man of mischievous devices is hated. So let's go to the NLT. That was in a DBY. It's interesting. Okay, um, Proverbs 14 and 17. Short-tempered people do foolish things. You see? You see the difference there? So it's not talking about somebody who is soon angry, dealing foolishly. No. It said short-tempered, foolish, short-tempered people do foolish things. And I gave you some examples. And schemers are hated. Right, because a schemer would get fired from his job and then... He'll start scheming on, on, on how to further sabotage that job by, by, by giving it bad reviews or you, you know how you know how people are when they get fired, you know. They start bad mouthing the boss and this, that forth and the other. So then when the boss loses his job, he finds out the who the schemer is and that schemer becomes hated. Okay, so let's come back over here. It says they that make more wise decisions. In our case, we make wise decisions according to how the Lord told us to make wise decisions within the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and within the, the uh, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and the law, statutes, and commandments of the Holy Scriptures. They that make more wise decisions take action when they need to and achieve their goals with relative ease. Implement these strategies into your daily life, and they'll soon become habits. Self-discipline can become your way of life if you want it. And by applying self-discipline to your daily life, you know, you start learning, you start becoming, you start learning new and improved and even better ways on, 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 how to be a servant to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, and how to be a better brother to the brotherhood. So with that, I'm going to say Shalom. It's on to the, to the next one.